This week's episode is brought to you by Productive Desks. It's no secret that businesses lose tens of trillions of dollars each year in non-productive time for employees. It's also no secret that you're running a business to make a profit. Those bags of meat that you have to pay are also stealing your time by continuously getting up, going to the bathroom, and generally just leaving their work area. Productive Desks has the solution. The new line of corporate desks designed to make sure you get the most out of those whiny monsters you call your employees. These desks come with harnesses that lock in place to keep your employees stationary for three, five, or eight hours at a time. Ever been on a roller coaster that goes upside down? It's basically that, but in an office. Employees cannot remove the harness unless the passcode is entered or spoken into the harness, ensuring that your team is literally positioned to do their job for a time that you deem necessary. Head on over to proddesk.com today to view the various lineup of tools that will squeeze every ounce of productivity out of your workforce. Enter MindGap at checkout to get a free phone headset that screws into the heads of your employees. This week's episode is brought to you by Elfin and Castle, located at 185 North Wabash and 111 West Adams in Chicago, Illinois. Look, I know you're looking for that perfect English pub experience so you can grab some incredible drinks and tasty food. Elfin and Castle has you covered. They have excellent daily drink specials, happy hour Monday through Friday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., and some delicious ass food for you to chew on while you watch some fucking sports. Come on down to Elfin and Castle at 185 North Wabash or 111 West Adams in Chicago, Illinois, and tell them that Mind Gap Podcast sent you. Hey there, generous ones. On this episode, Justin and I discuss the brand new toilet that was invented to make sure employees spend less time in the bathroom instead of making managers do their job and actually confront their employees about their bad behavior. Kevin, the motherfucking intern, pops up on the Twitch stream to attempt to do his goddamn job, and then we talk about scenes in movies that either just make guests get horny for food, or the ones that give me weird thoughts. Big thanks to the Twitch audience as they always make recording our episodes so much fun. Join us on our live streams at twitch.tv slash mindgappodcasts and hang out with us. We'd love to hear your thoughts as we fart our way through our discussions. That being said, grab your phone, pop a squat on your favorite toilet, and get ready to push through episode 227 of Mind Gap Podcast. Mind Gap Podcast. Um, also, you guys do yoga classes at work? Yeah. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. God damn it. Yoga slash meditation. <sighs> There's so many farts in there, I bet. Just everywhere. Oh, that's the best part of yoga, though, man. Yeah. Yoga farts? Bro. Bro. If you've never smelled a yoga fart, you've never smelled a fart. Bro. Bro. Yeah, I... Bro. Bro. I feel bad because, like, these things come up. They're like, you're going to come to yoga? And I was, I'm just like, no. You, you should just... The next time someone asks that, mm-hmm. I want you to do one. I want you to stand there, put your arms to the side, and just look down at yourself, <laughs> and then look back up at them and, and just don't say a word, but yeah. stand there in that position until they walk away from you. Yeah, like I made cookies and then I ate them, <laughs> but I'm not going to yoga. <laughs> do I look like I do yoga? Do I look like I need to do yoga? Sure, sure. But am I going to? No. Ask me to touch my toes. Can you? T- <laughs> no, I can't touch my toes. It hurts. It hurts. <laughs> what kind of question is that? But I, because my natural uh, proclivity is to just not attend those things. Sure. I'm like, nah, I'm not going. But people are so engaged in doing them that I, I'm like, oh, maybe I should. And like, it, it actually encourages me a See, little bit to go and do things. That's a good thing to get you out of your out of your yes. comfort zone because we can we, we can easily just yeah, like you know, ground. It's like that's this is what I this is where I'm at. This mm-hmm. is this is what I feel comfortable with. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't know a lot of people yet and things like that. Sure. So yeah. A, it's a good opportunity to go meet people. I'm like, yeah, I, I don't really want to do that. I'd rather do work. And they're like, no, that's the whole point. No one else here feels that way. It's like, that's why we're, you know, yeah. Right. We got to go. We're going to go do other fun things. Uh, Jared uh, was about to ask about yoga farts. Mm -hmm. And he said, has anyone ever shit their pants at yoga? Now, Jared, I don't know if you mean. In general? In general, because the answer to that is categorically yes. Undoubtedly yes. Absolutely yes. For sure. If you've ever been to a hot yoga class, Absolutely, uh, they've shit their pants. I can't imagine the smells in a hot yoga place. I've been to one hot yoga class, uh-huh. and I will say, and I've like, 
don't want to sound braggy, I've run two marathons. Mm-hmm. The hot yoga class was one of the hardest workouts I have ever done in my life. I hear it's hard. It sucked. Yeah. It's not my jam. I totally respect people who are into it. Not I it's it was it was too much for me. Imagine doing 15 of those in a month. Why would I do that? For a challenge. Okay. Do they do yoga challenges? Is they, that a thing? Uh, a couple years ago, Joe Rogan and his crew did uh, Sober October, and part of the challenge was to obviously not partake in any booze or drugs, and then they did 15 hot yoga classes. So basically every other day. I'm not a fan of that. They had to do it. And if they didn't, then you know they, they obviously lost the challenge or they had to like pay up something big. Oh, no. Thank but you. they said like... Not only was it like to, they would go together a lot, so yeah. it was kind of camaraderie and stuff. They were kind of suffering together, but overall, it was pretty good for them. But I can't imagine when I when you when you say basically, you think fifteen, like that's a lot, but it's not that big of a deal. But when you put it down to like every other day, it's like, right. Fuck that, like an hour and a half. Yeah, well, I was gonna say because yeah. those hot yoga classes are usually about ninety minutes, yeah, like seventy to ninety minutes, and it's not. Ugh. And you're, you're sitting in like a hundred and five degree room. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like I and I say this, and people are like, oh, okay. Like you're making a joke. I'm very, very serious when I say I sweat. I actually sweated yellow. Mm-hmm. Like I sweated a color. It was not good. I don't yeah. know if that was urine that was coming out of my pores, but it was like I have never been that hot. In my life. Yeah, it was gross. Yeah, it doesn't sound like fun. No, I, I can see how like if you did it like twice a month or whatever, you'd probably feel pretty good afterwards. The I bet. thing is, like I was limberish. Like I even oh, after yeah. one class, I'm like I feel like my joints yeah. are loose. Like I feel like I can move better. So I get it. Like yeah. I again fully respect and fully understand why people do it. Yeah, it is hardcore not for me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is hardcore not for you. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Uh, a yoga shit is called a yogo. Jared said. Oh. Is that another Australian euphemism? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. A yo-go. Oh, you yo-go, didn't you? Oh, you yo-goed right in your pantaloons. You had, it, you had it with O. I'm telling you, man. You had it I'm with good O. good for like one to three words. And then after that, it's, <laughs> it's down the tubes. For anyone watching on Twitch, if uh, you think you're looking in a mirror right now, Doug and I are switched sides. Uh, this is how you're getting, a, you're getting a throwback. Before we streamed... This is how the podcast setup was done. Mm-hmm. We're in my apartment right now, mm-hmm. and um, this is it. You're looking at you're looking at old school podcast. We did do one Facebook live. We did once. Yes, once from this room, not this room specifically, but you know, we, right? It looked very similar to this yes. room. Yeah, very very similar. <laughs> very similar. Yeah, just with carpet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As they say, with carpet. Oh man. Yep. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, a yoga is a popular custard marketed at kids. Not here. <laughs> That's the most American thing you could have said. <laughs> Not here. Not here. Mm-mm. No, uh, sir. Yeah, Aussie. Not on these fucking. Not on this fucking soil. This. This. These colors don't serve that. You dog cunt. You yeah. know. <laughs> you back to front of. <laughs> uh, I would like to try that if we ever come to Perth. I would like to try that. I'll pass. I'm good. <laughs> I don't need yogurt. Do you- are you against yogurt for real? I don't. I don't really enjoy it. I used really to, growing up, I used to go to TCBY all the time. I was like, "This is amazing!" And then I realized I had real ice cream. And then I was like, "Oh, it's ice cream. It's not yogurt." Because I remember going back to TCBY. I'm like, "Why does this taste weird?" I'm like, "Oh, it's because it's yogurt. Because it's healthier for you." Yeah, especially what? when you top it with sprinkles. I was like, and what Oreos I, and what Heath I got Martin. wasn't healthy. I got a parfait <laughs> full of all sorts of uh, Glo- accoutrement, glorious goodness. Yeah. It's it was not. <laughs> it's like someone going there. I ate salad, right? Taco salad, which is not salad. You no, know? not at all. It's a taco. <laughs> it's a large, a large taco. That's oh. all that is. Um, you know what they should install at these yoga places, mm. these hot yoga places, mm. is angled toilets. Oh boy. Yep. Well, I can't imagine at, at the yoga places this would be that big of a deal. But if you guys haven't heard about this, uh, someone invented a new toilet. I think it's it's starting in the UK. And it's at an angle that's like aiming down. And the whole point of it is to make at it 13 degrees, 13 degrees, precisely 13 degrees. The idea being that you can't just like sit on the toilet, but you actually have to like almost prop yourself up with your legs. And the point is that after about five minutes, it becomes incredibly uncomfortable. 
so that you will well, not incredibly uncomfortable. If you read the article, it said which all, all, first off that website mm-hmm. garbage. Oh yeah, garbage website. Yeah, I Lots could barely I could barely see after all the pop ups happened. I could almost see the, mm-hmm. the column that I was reading. Yeah, it's pretty bad. But they said that you it it's, it gently engages your legs, mm-hmm. so it encourages you to not spend too much time on the toilet. Yeah. So the whole point being <laughs> that people are spending too much time in the shitter. And uh, the businesses want that time back, so they're, someone invented a toilet to combat the issue. Because instead of dealing with, you know, I don't know, managing people out or coaching people, they're like, you know what will solve the problem? A new toilet. Right. Because then we don't have to have these tough conversations. People will just naturally get off the toilet. Problem solved. Instead Worthy of investing, investment. Instead of investing in better management mm-hmm. and people building, yeah. let's invest thousands of dollars in a brand new uh, bathroom redesign. Or just better people. Hire better people. Well, you know that's what I mean? true. <laughs> in a lot of situations. I, I had not considered which that. Which is a lot easier. It's that's like, it's like oh, just get a better job. Like, right. I get it. Sometimes you're going to have shit people, and that's fine. Literally. But in this situation, like, if someone is, is spending that much time, it'd be like, hey, man... Because this is the thing. <laughs> this is like uh, an escalation sort of situation, like where it's like, cool. Some Because someone's spending so much time in the shitter, not doing their job, someone's like, cool, we're going to invent something to deal with this. And then it's like, okay, well, then what's the next level from here? Right. What else are we going to do to combat people, quote unquote, stealing time? So, see, what happens next is someone invents something to counteract this which is a thing that you put on top of the toilet that corrects that angle. It's a thir- <laughs> it's a 13 degrees wedge that you put on top that clips you on the slide toilet. It on and you're yeah. just like, ha, fuck Now you. I can sit evenly for hours. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever done that? Just gone and hung out in a bathroom? I have taken a longer poo break than I probably should have on occasion. Mm-hmm. Um I absolutely. Um I it's not necessarily that I just like sitting in that environment and just mm-hmm. wafting those smells. But uh, there's like you know, ever you take your phone in there and stuff like I you'll get I get I've gotten lost in an article or playing a game or something. And I'm just like I should probably leave. Yeah, I've definitely sat in the toilet too long to where my my legs have gotten numb, <laughs> um, which is not good. Yeah. Uh, but we have a guy at work that notoriously every day takes at least two to three 20 minute bathroom breaks. That's awful. And it is like clockwork. And today. It was 21 minutes, and everyone's like, oop, 21, he's back. And it, like, and then he gets back and doesn't jump right back into the no. job. He gets back and then does, uh, like, it, it, it's the, ama- the amount of time wasting is amazing. But we've had the same joke. We're like, you know, he probably should go to the doctor because mm-hmm. if you're spending 21 minutes every single time you go to the bathroom, there's something wrong. That sucks, too, because, I mean, if you think about that, because the problem is if you go and try to coach that guy, because I get, I get it. Like yeah. it sucks. You have to be like, look, Travis, uh, I've been watching you go to the bathroom. Okay, <laughs> that's how you start the conversation. Yes, and Travis, we have cameras in the toilets, and I've been watching Travis closely every day. You spend an hour total in the bathroom. Like that's an hour of your day. Is you spent get two in the lunches. Bathroom. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. Plus your lunch. And it's like, you can't keep doing that. Right. Like your, your productivity is just... Cause, because he's going to force you to call him out, and then it's going to turn into a pissing match. That's what it's going to be. Because no pun intended. Pun intended. Or he's going to be like, good. Oh, so now you're, you're... I'm on the clock for when I have to go to the bathroom. And he's this is the exact guy who's going to... What they'll do is they'll establish what the new rules are, and he'll follow them to a T. We have... The, the, this person is not that person, but mm. we have those people in the department as well. We have exactly. two of them. Mm-hmm. And... They ruin it for that's, everybody else. That's exactly what would happen. Yeah. That's exactly what would happen. Because mm-hmm. you have to essentially be like, dude, you can't keep doing this. And what they'll do is like, well, so-and-so does this. And right. so it's like, I'm not talking about them. But you have to consider the overall behavior. But the problem is that that environment just fosters that behavior and mm-hmm. fosters that sort of thing where people are like, I'm willing to waste time because I can. Right. And if you call them on it, they get uh, defensive. Yep. Or they'll be like, okay, well, then uh, I get how long am I allowed? Five minutes. Then it's like, are you going to time me right. for five minutes? It's like, do you do I have to? And then you're set in a situation where you have to start, because you're doing it to him, you have to do it to everybody else. Absolutely. All of a sudden, people are like, it's now mandated that everyone gets five minutes right. in the bathroom. Anything longer than that, the first will be a, a warning, a verbal right. warning, and then blah, blah, blah. You get the bathroom Gestapo now, and it's just, uh, yeah. Well, and and that's what the, does that do to morale? Right, exactly. And then right down, in the, right down to the toilet. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, it, that's that's exactly it, though, too, is that th- those type of people want, like, insanely clearly defined, okay, well, how long do I have then? Yeah. Give me a time. <laughs> you're like, exactly. no, it's not. Define the time right. that I'm allowed to be in the bathroom. It's like you're missing the fucking point. Be an adult about it. It's like, that's the t- that's, you have the amount of time it mm-hmm. should take a normal fucking adult to use the restroom. Yeah. It's like you're not wearing enough flair. <laughs> right. Well, how much is, should I, whatever's comfortable for you. It's like, so I need to put more on if you want to. If that's what your truth is. If that's what yeah. your truth It's like, what the, because I get it. Like, I, I understand that stuff. But that person is clearly um, uh, stealing time. Yes. Uh, they clearly, uh, they figured out something where like, I can take three bathroom breaks a day. That's an hour. It breaks up the day plus their lunch. And they're essentially just not doing their job. Right. You know, and that sort of stuff. And, and those folks, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for those kinds of people. I don't have time for those environments that A, allow that to happen, or B, allow a person like that to prosper. Yes. Again, and to hearken to last week, uh, justice, Doug. If there's no justice in the world, right. it's not okay with me. Right. Like, that person can't continue to exist. And it's a situation, it's not a fun conversation to have. But the, can you have that conversation anymore? Because Absolutely our can. company is so well, worried about... Like it's got to be, you've got to have rationale to put someone on. You have to have rationale to put someone on a pip, and then from the pip it goes to then. Well, here's what it comes like, down to: like you can't even just say you're on a pip. Well, I would say for you, those, it's a performance improvement plan for those that are not in the corporate world. Piping industrial progress. That's is what right. It stands yes, for. it's a new board game coming out. Sorry, real quick. Uh, adult moments back on. He says a mind gap episode talking about poop. What? You're welcome. This is an educational. Uh, discussion though it's not yeah. this isn't your typical Doug talking about explosive diarrhea for 20 minutes this mm-hmm. is this is like business classes will study this episode agreed yes yes this is about time this is about law man this yeah. is about employment law really it's about law and time theft right you know yeah. it's a time heist is what it is this is a time heist episode <laughs> I think if we can boil this down to its core essence yeah yeah the bathroom time heist <laughs> that may be the name of this episode <laughs> <laughs> but you were saying um uh, Putting people on a pip. Uh, yeah. So the thing is, like, if you're going to put someone on a performance improvement plan, before you do that, you have to have documentation that you are attempting to coach somebody. And that's where that stuff has to have. It needs to be documented. It's like, hey, Travis, we, I need to sit down and talk to you. Yes. This is happening. I'm just letting you know. This is essentially like this has to stop. You document it. And then if it continues, that's where the performance improvement plan comes into place. I agreed. But like what happened to the good old days where you could just say, hey, guess what? You're fired. What, to black people? That's not what I said. <laughs> yeah, but the good old days where the you're good like old days. smack people on the you ass. Know, when America was great again. Yeah, you know, where you'd be like, hey, we don't want that person in here because right. they look different, you know? But no, but seriously. The good like, old days where you worked at a place for 40 years. One place and one place only. Choose wisely. I want my gold watch, Doug. (laughs) (laughs) No, but what I'm saying is like, and yes, I understand that these things have been put in place (laughs) to protect uh, that kind of discrimination. Mm -hmm. But it has gotten to a point where people who blatantly should be fired, blatantly should be let go. Like this, what are we calling him? Travis. Travis, right. Because the other person, actually, his name does start with a T. So I want to be careful. Travis, um, you know, like... The him and the other, I won't name their names, but the other people who are like the ones who take, okay, well then give me a time. Mm-hmm. Give me a specific set of those yeah. nitpicky little fucks. Yeah. Why can't you just like, I miss, yeah. those are the type of people that you shouldn't have to, to tiptoe around. Yeah. Those are the type of people that will bring the lawsuit though. Well, the thing like, is that, you should just be able to yeah. look at those and go, look, you're just a bad employee. Mm-hmm. Like bottom line, let's both agree on that and you're gone. Well, what I would say is to their managers, I'd be like, are you addressing this behavior? Because if you're not, that's on you as a manager because you have to coach to that performance. And it sucks. It's annoying. It's like trying to tell someone, hey, uh, you smell um, and you need to clean yourself better. Like, that's not a fun conversation to have. No. But you got to have it. It sucks. That's an awful conversation. I would never want to manage. You know, and it's a situation where... You know, if someone is is being shitty and not using their time effectively, the longer you let it go on, the worse it's going to be when you confront it, which is probably why people just ignore it, right? Because who wants to have that kind of fun conversation, especially right. with someone who's a pain in the ass? But if you want to change, you got to do it. Well, and the harder thing then becomes that if you do not have that conversation within a X amount of time, then it's like, well, I... It's been three years. Yeah. Why is this just now a problem? Exactly. And now it's even harder. And so it gets harder and harder to manage, harder mm-hmm. and harder to have that conversation. Which, again, I blame the managers for that. Because right. 
again, those Nip things, that in the butt right away. It's not fun, but it's a situation where it's like, hey, yeah, we're not going to do that. Right. Like, because it's X, not y, and fun, Z. but it's also what you're fucking getting paid for. It's your for. job. Like, you need to step up on that. Yeah. Uh, so when it comes to this, like, new toilet thing, I'm, I'm of two minds because, like, I get it. Like, time theft is pretty obnoxious. And if you have a bunch of shitheads, you know, that are just m- milking the clock the for that puns sort of stuff, don't stop, guys. They will never stop. But the point is, when you have diarrhea, it has to go in the toilet. True or false? Well, I mean, it depends on where you are. True. Are you in the woods? <laughs> is the Pope in the woods? <laughs> is there a bear? Is the bear in the Vatican? Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, agreed. So it shouldn't go on the wall. It shouldn't go on the wall. Or on the sink. But the point, the, the point is, it's like, if you have people that you're concerned are not, that are stealing time, then you need to manage that. Okay, yes, yes. It shouldn't be a situation where we're like, we'll fix the problem by installing this new technology right. to make it uncomfortable. Because you're still not, a, that person is still not a good employee. Because the, the other thing is to agreed, and that that is undoubtedly showing up elsewhere mm-hmm. in their performance yes. that you're not addressing. It's They'll not find just another way. thing. Yeah. But the other thing is too, those types of people are resourceful enough <laughs> to find a way to counteract that. Not to they say, will counteract that. Not to say that there's a correlation here, but you know, prisoners are pretty uh, ingenious and innovative when it comes to things. You know, they find the way around. They ferment Absolutely. alcohol in toilets from rotten fruit. They'll like, do it. They yeah. are so good at finding. What, it's the same thing in this situation. People work harder to cheat on tests than to study. Right. They spend more time figuring right. out how they can cheat the test than if they just actually sat down and studied. <laughs> they learn it. And the same thing, people are going to find loopholes. Right. That is an unfortunate truth. A certain percentage of people will always find a video game, find a bug, and they'll exploit it to their own gain, to their own benefit. It's going to happen. It'll happen in the workforce. And the thing is, it sucks. But as a manager, you have to identify that and you have to correct that behavior. And if people are not willing to adjust their behavior, then you got to manage them out. Right. It's simple. It's it's probably overly simplified. I but like how you say manage them out. It, yeah. To me, I'm just like, you fucking cut them. You got to cut them. Fire em. their ass. Because there is, I do understand what you you're saying. Manage them out. Just get them out of there. There's a certain level of, you know, when you kind of, again, talking a little bit about what we talked about last week, when you watch someone fail enough times mm-hmm. in a role and they just they hang around, it's like, who's going to do something about this? Right. Who's going to have the conversation? Who's going to hold them accountable? Like, what are we doing here? Like, when is this going to come to fruition where this person's going to stop ruining their other people's careers around them and stuff, and someone's going to actually be like, all right, it's time for you to go. Because the thing is, that starts to grade and deteriorate the morale for the rest mm-hmm. of the team. Because 100%, like the te- our team, everyone questions. And it's 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 be in whispers and behind closed doors and in hushed conversations. But people are questioning, well, why does this, why does so-and-so get away? How come no one's done anything? You've noticed this too, right? Absolutely, I have. Like, and that... Then, the, then there's just this uh, this uncomfortableness in the in the department. You start getting the the beginnings of a coup, right? And you know, there's one thing I learned from you. Yeah, that's how to stage a coup and how to prevent a coup. <laughs> do you, Do you remember? It was a force. Did we have it on the whiteboard? You wrote it. It was so funny because when Justin and I worked together, we had this giant <laughs> dry erase this. board that was like the length of an entire wall, and just one day, Justin walked up. Either it was there when I got there or you were writing it out just in silence. You didn't say anything. He just wrote like four or five steps on how to stage a coup. He's like, yeah. step one, stage coup. Yes. <laughs> or plan coup. Step, step three, uh, execute coup. Stage three, assume power. Four, uh, take action so coup is not uh, done to you or right. something it's, like it's that. It's not repeatable, yeah. It, it was just like listed up there. I was like, <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> Where's Justin mentally right now? The like four stages of, how to, of a coup. Come on, man. Everyone knows this. <laughs> Just written on the dry race board. Was, that was really, there for yeah. at least 48 hours. I was like, huh, okay. I, someone, one of us has a picture of that. I know they do. I took one. I had to you? see if I can find I, it. Because I love, I, that made, I still to this day, I'm very. I'm going to real quick see if I can find it. I'm very, uh. Very excited. About I wish I could that. just um, search for coup in my photos. And uh, I don't. Did we? I we might have had this person. Uh, <laughs> we might have had this person on the chat before. You'll have to remind me. But we have someone uh, who just. What do you in. know? What do I have? How to stage a coup? Number one, get everyone on your side. <laughs> Number two, it's very important. Plan coup. <laughs> Number three, execute execute coup. Number four. Restructure, rebuild, 
Number five, take necessary measures to prevent coup against you. That's it, guys. <laughs> you heard it here first on Mind Gap. The five, <laughs> f- five flawless steps uh, to, to doing it. And you just coup. walked up and you just wrote it out. And it was, just, uh, again, either you wrote it out or was just there when I got in the morning. I was like, huh? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> this is the best. Anyway, I interrupt uh, you. No, that's fine. On uh, on the chat here, um, uh, Kevin the intern popped in. Hey, have Kevin we had the, him on the? I know the that Kevin the before? intern has followed us, but okay, Kevin, yeah. get uh, back to work. So yeah, to to that, I have one thing to say: is Kevin, the fuck are you doing in the chat? Uh, it says he goes, "Hey, boss, sorry I'm late. <laughs> I just got back from Kinko's with your shirtless pics riding a dragon for your internet teaser." Picks for Mind Gap episode 56, Masculinity with Rance Rizzuto. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a deep cut. <laughs> <laughs> that makes, that is everything. And also, <laughs> not what that episode's about. Kevin, you fucking idiot. Did you even listen to it? It's about toxic masculinity. Oh my God, I love that. Uh, and then, yeah, Justin is, almost, <laughs> Drew goes, Justin's almost out of beer, Kevin. Do you not see that? <laughs> And then uh, Jared said, poor Kevin, they almost noticed you. Then Doug got loud. <laughs> yep. That's what I'm good for. Oh, my God. That's fucking Volume funny. goes up. <laughs> uh, keep up the good work, Kev. Yeah. Kevin, uh, thanks. But if you spend more than five minutes in the bathroom, we're going to know. And we're going to yank you out of there. We're installing uh, new toilets with a 13% grade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, you know what? We're going to go. We're going to double it. 26% grade. Good luck. You essentially have to do like a squat just I'm, to take a shit. It's the new squatty potty. <laughs> <laughs> it's, hey, it's called working out while you shit, it's, you know? It's the it's the uh, not uh, not desirable one. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> um, I, uh, <laughs> I'm so glad you did the, the math on that. Yeah. Because you're like, we're going to double it. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, I got you about. Yep. One, uh, We're going to do 13 100%. T- times two. It's 110, 110 grade. <laughs> Pretty sure that's what it works out to. Yes. Yes. Kevin, do that math for me. Do it. Um, <laughs> I, I, um, I just think it's a bummer that, that it has gotten to a point where it is so, I, I don't know. I just, I, it bothers me that we have to tiptoe around people who are just inherently bad workers. Mm-hmm. And that, that it's because we have dealt with that in our departments at work for so long. Mm-hmm. The entire time I've been there, we've had those personalities work there. So for coming up on six years now, mm-hmm. and we've had to deal with that. Congratulations, by the way. Shut the fuck up. Hey, man, I'm happy for Fuck you. you. Six years? It's a big one. I spent six years at the hotel. I mean, it's, so, I it's mean, five and a half, really. Like, hey, we call it what coming it is. Up, coming up pretty soon. <laughs> I can't anyway, wait to get the notification on uh, LinkedIn. I'm quitting LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> just like you quit Facebook. Right. You quitter. I don't need it. <laughs> uh, no, I just it just it it amazes me that that this has been something for six years, mm-hmm. and it's it's these people have been pulling the same games we're talking about for six full years. All right, you're in charge tomorrow. Yeah. What do you do to address this problem? Immediately sit them down and mm-hmm. go look. Uh, it's 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 well known that you know you have your issues with us. We obviously have your issues with you. Uh, if we if things don't improve, you will be put on a performance improvement plan. Um, just so you know, you've been notified, mm-hmm. and we're going to be monitoring. Mm-hmm. And then from there, take a week, because in a week you can build more than enough yeah. case to put them on a pip. Put them on a pip, and in three months they're out. Yeah. Like just, just fucking do it. That's the thing. I don't understand the not doing it. Do you? Would you have any hope that they would improve? No. You would have no hope. Absolutely not. You wouldn't. You wouldn't hope that they actually were like, wow, someone called me on this, and they actually. What if they did improve? Would you? Because be I've because I've seen the personality types for mm-hmm. five years, five and a half years. I know that that's not how it would it would come yeah. off. They would they would become victimized immediately. And try to get everyone the sympathy, mm-hmm. and that's what it. That's that's what it because they've been talked to before, mm-hmm. but for whatever reason, never put on a pip. Mm-hmm. So that I know, I know what the outcome would be of that. Do you think you could reach them, Justin? No, I know I could reach them. No, in, in the sense that you're fired. Yeah. Yes, I could reach them eventually. Yeah, I, I, I would. You know, that's me. Just wishful thinking. Um, I don't know these people, and I also don't imagine someone who is willing to spend an hour in the bathroom a day at work is just someone, like you said, either has a severe medical problem, or uh, is just doesn't want to be there. Yeah. So, and and honestly, that's what kind of what I would say. Like, hey, man, your brand is I don't want to be here. So, do you want to be here or not? Right. 
because right that's now that's a good exactly. And that's what it, I would yeah. say is, and I would use this because they'd be like, "Well, what, what, what?" I was like, "It's time theft, is what this is. Right. You are you are stealing time from this organization by spending it in the bathroom, right? And that has to stop now. So here's what we're gonna do: uh, is we're gonna, and this is where it sucks is if you're gonna monitor him, you're gonna have to monitor everybody, right? Which again, well, I no, mean, here's the thing though: everyone else. As is I, we and you can with like how long someone's been on break, how long someone mm-hmm. been on something. Like no one else, no one else mm-hmm. pops up like that. No yeah. one else is just like so everybody. The phone you can everybody see. knows. Gotcha. You know, like so that's what you could do now. Then the next thing I would anticipate this person to do is to find a way to finagle his status. Sure. Which you could then just double down on and be like, you are continuing to de- right. not only are you stealing time, you're deceiving. Right. So this is it's time theft and yeah. status hopping. Exactly. So you are now it sounds like a bad Jean Claude Van Damme movie. <laughs> status hopping. Status hopping. Yeah. Time theft. Uh so yeah, Jared goes, uh me, yeah, I hate lazy coworkers. Also me is on Twitch right now at work. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, a dull moment said, do you think uh, we'll ever get to a four-day work week? Uh, before we answer that, Kevin, the intern, says, hey, boss, sorry I'm late. Just got back from Benny's. Spend a salad, $400 in Ubers. Hope I can expend that. Got you a sixer of O'Doul's. O'Doul's is a... Uh, uh, a non-alcoholic, non-alcoholic beer. beer yeah. What a waste of money. Kevin! Why the fuck would anyone want to drink O'Doul's or decaf coffee? Time out. Justin's the boss. Who is the boss? When he says, hey, boss, who's he Both talking to? Both of us. Okay, good. I just want to clarify. Yeah. Because if I'm your boss, why would you buy me alcohol? You know I don't drink alcohol. Right. You're a shitty intern. I think we've established We've more than established that. Kevin, guess what? You're close to being on a pit, buddy. Yeah, man. You're, that's you're, two. That's two. <laughs> you only get two more. You're on no, 13 or 14 more times. We're going to have a problem. <laughs> right. Uh, but to, uh, to a dull moments thing, do you uh, guys think we'll ever go to a four-day no. work week? I would fucking love nothing more than a four-day work week. No. I think that it is a... a, a, a the other countries have proven. This goes back to what we were talking about a couple podcasts ago where we couldn't just... A hamburger in the ass. Fika. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that worked too well, but yeah. It really did. Uh, we both stunned each other. We were right. like, whoa. Um, no, but I, I do think it's been proven uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is it does make you more... Uh, um, more Alacrity. Uh, more alacrity, yeah. It, it makes you um, efficient. Thank you. It makes you more efficient. Um, I just, I, I don't think, I, I don't think we'll ever get there because the rest of the world isn't doing it. Every, if yeah. everyone's not doing it, then all the business is going to see is that we're losing money. Well, here's the thing. The rest of the world's on the metric system, but that doesn't bother us. So, you know. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Different, but fair. Also, if we do merchandise, we need to have something that just says alacrity on it and then the Mind Gap logo. <laughs> That's like one of the best inside <laughs> jokes. Like if you if you follow this podcast, it'll just be like alacrity is the word that fits in any gap. Yep, absolutely. Just, what's yeah. that word? Alacrity. Like a mind gap. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, no, I have. There's, there's no way it, it would. It would have to come from some incredibly successful organization. Yeah. Uh, that proved that hey, yeah, we go, went to a four day work week and whatever. It, but in now general, there are some that are trying it out. Sure. There are some that are 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 piloting it. Some some really like uh, the the unicorn startups out of yeah. uh, Silicon Valley are trying it out. So maybe, but. It would take a fucking it and not that, lot. but it's like for how long will that work? Yeah. It may work for that time, but does it? And here's a dirty word: does it scale? You know, and things like that. So it, it's a situation where I would love it because there's a lot of stuff that we do is that's archaic. A hundred percent. Yeah. A lot of the yeah. the stuff, and I, I love the idea of a flexible work schedule where someone can come in whatever time or when are when are they most creative? Right. When are they most effective? Some roles. It is what it is. Customer service has to be there. You're in it. You got to right. be on the phones. You got to take those calls. Yada yada yada. And I, a, and I lot- answer the phone better between these hours and these hours. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so if I could just come in and just do yeah. that, yeah. For me, I like the flexibility because you know I'm more of a morning person, and I found that around one o'clock, eh, my productivity Start starts dipping. Off, yeah. Whereas I worked with people who are the polar opposite, where they are just getting they're getting rolling at three. Yeah. You know, they're like, yeah, and they start, ro- and I'm like, nope, man, that's when I start tapering off. I'm less productive in the afternoon than I am in the morning. Yeah. Because that's just, that's just how I operate. So, would you rather, ooh, I love this. Let's make it nasty. Would you rather Fika or, oh, um, tell me more. Would you rather, uh, now I, I've not, uh, shocker, not done the math on this, mm-hmm. uh, but would you rather do a seven day work week 
mm-hmm. where you only work four hours a day, or would you rather do a four day work week where you work ten hours a day? Mm. Again, math is very <laughs> wrong. <laughs> it's, how how many is that? What's seven <laughs> times four? It's twenty eight. Okay, cool. <laughs> What's seven times six? Thirty six. Forty two. All right. What's seven <laughs> times five? Thirty five. All right. I feel like so I'm you work passing five and a half hours. A math test. So seven day work week where you work uh, where you work a little six bit hours each day. A day. Yeah. You work a little bit each day. A little incremental. Yeah. You you or basically six days a week. You get what I'm saying. Would you like to have a six or seven day work week where you work fewer hours, uh-huh. or a shorter work week where you work longer hours each day? I think me, I would probably. Seven, seven days a week for, for four hours a day is my answer, uh, just <laughs> FYI. I want to work 28 hours a week. Uh, it, it, for me, if that's the case, I'm like, just let's put that into four days. We'll do four sevens. How about that? Sure. Or eight threes. Like, I'm okay. Or three eights. Sorry, that's what I meant. Yep. Is that, the, does that scan? Kevin, do the math for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, longer, uh, longer days, shorter week. Longer week, shorter days. I think I would rather do like four tens and then have three days off. Okay. Um, I know, like in, in a lot of workforces, that that people people do that. I just like to have that full three days. I think is is good. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I typically work, depending on what's going on. I mean, I do I, I work all day and then I go home, put Natalie to bed, and then I'll go back to work at night. Sometimes like yeah. I have to get projects done, so it's it's not unreasonable for me to have to do that. I would still need that flexibility with, with my family. Sure. Absolutely. Stuff if I was able to do that, <clears throat> but, and that's kind of, the, that's the approach I take, you know, as a salaried employee, it's like, yeah, I got to work when I got to work, you know? So if that means I got to do some work over the weekend, I got to do some work over the weekend. Um, but I love the idea of a four day week. I love the idea of just breaking out of the stuff. It's like, why do you do it? Because we do it. Right. I hate that thought process. It's just because it's how it's always been done. It's because yeah. that's just what we do. And Absolutely. the idea that, well, if you take a day away from the work week, then that's one less day of productivity. Right. Because people are like, because if you're going to be that much more productive in four days, what if you have five days? You know, so it's like this weird logic that right. like, well, if we have more days that we're working, we're going to get more done. Right. And that, I don't know if that translates to all industries, mm. you know? I don't, I very much don't think it does. You know, it's yeah. like healthcare, nah, doesn't right. really work in that regard. Maybe it does to some, and I'm not saying like the whole industry has to shut down in a day. Why do banks still close on Sundays? It's a great fucking That's question. some horseshit, That is man. a great question. Those, that is like, those bank hours are like the worst. Right. The worst. They're like, hey, we're open for three hours on a Saturday. Saturday. Hope you're there before noon. It's as if, again, as if business just stops yeah. on the weekend. Well, it's so crazy because so much of that stuff, like because banks are closed, a lot of other business can't take place. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Can't, like there's no buying cars. Right. There's no buying homes. There's no right. like all this stuff stops because the banks are open. Right. It's like, what? What are we doing? And right. in, in the day and age where you need access, now that online banking obviously helps that, but if you need to process something important, it's like, sorry, I Sundays. Right, can't. I've never worked a job where we were just straight up closed on a day. Now, we had days off, like when we worked at assignment desk. Yeah. But we had, like, we would rotate the pager. And technically, the business was still open. But yeah. I've never been in a job where it's like, no, 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 no. Every day, every Sunday, we are closed. Like Even I've, currently? I've never been in a place where it's like, we're closed. Like... Our, so your current job, you guys work on Saturdays and Sundays? Grubhub is open 24-7, baby. Oh, you said it. I did. Oh, wow. I realized. <laughs> Pornhub is open 24-7, baby. We're gonna, we're, uh, <laughs> whoop, just whip that in there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, Great workplace, man. They do yoga. They do I, everything. Look, here's the thing. <laughs> Nothing bad has been said about it. They are no. a phenomenal company from what I'm understanding. Yeah. Will not say where I work. Yeah, um, exactly. But yeah, I... Uh, I mean, we're closed on the weekends, like straight up closed. Good. I've never worked in that place well, where something true. is closed. I worked at a hotel that was open 24 seven. I guess you weren't, you weren't arguing that those places exist. Yeah. <laughs> Doug, you're wrong. I work there. No, these places don't exist, Justin. <laughs> I've just, I've never worked in a one where it's like, Hey, are you going to, no, well, that's right. Fairness, no do. one's going to be here on right. this day. In like, fairness, unless it's a holiday. Do. I've missed this. Well, it's, I know this, the, the, the. yeah. Right. <laughs> Doug keeps, uh, for those of you listening and not watching, Doug keeps hitting the uh, table legs. Yes. And they're very, very angelic sounds. They yeah. are made of vibranium. <laughs> That's exactly it, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so wait, so not, yeah, I guess the hotel. 
oh yeah, with your previous job too, I guess there was there people needed to be on call at all mm-hmm. times. Well, that's all right, it's a fair. And point. while my that's job, a fair point. Specifically, I could maybe have the I would have the day off. Right, the company was still open. So like sure yeah whereas yeah. like you know you go to a bank it's like no we're closed on Sunday flat out there is nobody here right and even if you want to make a transaction like you said yeah. it's not going to nah. process till Monday not so uh, it's sorry like nobody and you better there. hope Monday's not a national holiday because yeah. uh, no good exactly no good I just I've, yeah. I'm flabbergasted because the rest of the world doesn't seem to work. In that way, right. for better or worse, you know, because it used to be Sundays, everything was closed. Right, you shut that shit down. I remember uh, watching uh, that thing you do. Yes, yeah, that wonderful. I love that movie. It's a great movie. Love it. And there's a part where uh, the Lily character's dad, who owns a department store, is like looking at the paper. He's like, "Oh, and look at this. Look at this." He's like looking at the competition. He's like talking about how they're open on Saturdays. He's like, "You know, pretty soon we're going to be they're going to be open on Sundays. We're going to be working on Sundays." <laughs> right. And it's like, yeah, that's yeah. exactly what happened. Absolutely. Like, because people started to realize, they're like, wait, if we're open, people can come spend their money. <laughs> Shocker, it's a good thing. But again, that took transition over yeah. time, right? Like people were like, Sundays is a, usually a day of worship. It's like, hey, we're spending time with the family and everything like that. And then it turned into, I don't know, for better or worse, it's like, well, things are open on Sunday. And now the way in which our world works, it's like, I, like I, I found I was going to go buy a new phone and Verizon's just closed on Sundays. Really? I was like, you too? What? How are you not open? Horizon. How are you not open on Sundays? Yeah, you're a goddamn cell phone company. I mean, we are we are we're a very twenty four seven economy. Yes, very much twenty four seven. Especially when it's like we like our news cycles twenty four seven. Yeah, we like our economy twenty four seven. We want our porn twenty four seven. Right. (laughs) Hard stop. Twenty four eight. Hard stop. Yeah. Twenty four eight. Eight threes. You know. That's it. (laughs) But it's it's one of those things where um you know it it just it's. I, I can only do a lot of things on the weekends. Mm-hmm. Like I can't, I could maybe go get a phone on a weekday, but it's not easy. Right. You know? Well, and I think that's the other thing that anytime you make an appointment to do something, oh, yeah. like, it's always, again, cause like, you know, if dentists or someone only has, they have the, the quote unquote weekend hours or they yeah. don't work Sundays, but they work again, limited on Saturdays. You're like, well, you understand that who you're servicing mm-hmm. More than likely is working during the hours that you are here, yeah. and needs you to be open on the weekends, and you yeah. will be flush with business. Exactly. So why don't you take a Monday Tuesday off? Yeah. And I, I, I get where like, well, everyone else has Saturday Sunday off, but you've chosen to be in an industry, you've mm-hmm. chosen to be in a business that you need to service people who have these two days off. Mm-hmm. I feel like that their concession should be made. Agreed. Uh, send out an email. Let everyone know, Justin. Kevin, get the memo going. Kevin! Speaking of Kevin, uh, uh-huh. he, he typed in, longer longer week times shorter days plus longer days times shorter week equals alacrity. <laughs> Did I do good, boss? Did I? <laughs> I don't know who's running this account, but I'm fucking in love with you I, right uh, now. I appreciate it, yes. Hey, hey bosses, sorry I'm late. <laughs> hey, bosses. Where do you keep going? <laughs> what are you doing? I really... <laughs> Wait, what are your... What do you mean? I really... <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. I really, I really kind of need to know if I did good. I might have kind of maybe have maybe some bets on a horse that didn't pan out. I don't know who you are, and I love this. This is the best thing that's ever happened. Kevin, on this if you can't figure out days of the week, what what fucking loan shark did you go to to bet on a horse? <laughs> Who's your bookie? What is? What I is fear your, for your kneecaps. Kevin, what is your life? What is your life? This is I amazing. thought I knew this kid, but apparently I, know. I don't. Kevin, Kevin's, <laughs> ironically, his uh, status is going up in the world for me. I, okay, okay. I really like this kid. He's a go-getter. <laughs> I think he's an idiot. He doesn't know how to manage with a money. Gold. I like him. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know anything. I like him. He's, he's doing alacrity uh, <laughs> formulas. On this. He's a good kid. He's a good alacrity fucking kid. formulas. I love it. Uh, <laughs> um, do, oh, fuck. I just had a great question for you. Oh, speaking of that thing you do. Uh, there was um, every time I would watch that movie, it's in that scene, I think, where he's reading the newspaper mm-hmm. and they're in the store. Guy, the character of Guy, is eating a hamburger mm-hmm. and uh, drinking a Sprite. Mm-hmm. And he's he's watching his father's store. Every single time I watched that movie, I got hungry for Burger King and a bottle of Sprite. That's amazing. And it was one of those where I had like, it was like a, you hear about pregnancy cravings, where that's all you can think about. I All I, I can think this. about. And so I like I would watch that, and if I knew I wanted to watch it, or if I got Burger King, I'd put that movie on specifically to watch and eat at the same time. That's it amazing. Would, it's a weird little peccadillo, I know, 
But is there any is there any Whoa. movies that or TV shows or anything that when you see that you're like, it's always every time I watch that thing I want this thing. I was going to say something a little bit different. Sure, and I please. just saw something recently. I realize I watch a lot of movies a lot, especially with Natalie yes, and, and stuff like that, you or do. even some of my favorite movies that I like to watch. There's always there's sometimes there's these moments where I fixated on a very small character or a very small thing about like it's happening in it's the, happening in the, in the either frame on the somewhere. side yeah, or yeah. the way someone delivers a line and I just I I'm racking my brain right now because it just happened the other day where something was on I was like oh yeah this is the part that I I fixate yeah on either the way that this is delivered. Or the way that someone looks, yeah. Or the way that someone's doing something, like Natalie's. Natalie has ruined the movie Zootopia for me. Just thanks, ru- Natalie. Ruined it. Thanks. I've seen it just too many times. Yeah. I equate it to uh, uh, Enter Sandman by Metallica. I heard that every day. <laughs> I dig that yeah. for like two years yeah. in high school with all the sports I was playing. People were like, put on Metallica. Ugh. It's like I don't want to hear Enter Sandman ever again. Right. And Zootopia is pretty close in that regard where I'm like, ugh. But the one thing I like about Zootopia is I get overly analytical of it. Um, but there's also certain things where I'll, because so much of that movie is painstakingly animated individual parts of it. There's no like matte painting or background stuff. Almost everything that's moving is individually animated, which makes it fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I try to notice little things. And there's this one scene in the very beginning where Judy uh, gets uh, attacked by a fellow uh, weasel of her age, and he scratches her, and there's this like little rabbit that's like trying to, like there's three kids, and two of them speak, but one of them doesn't. I'm always like, that's kind of weird. How come they don't have this one character speak? It's just like a little rabbit, and it's like looking back and forth, and it's having like all these facial reactions, and it's responding naturally to everything. But I'm like, how come you don't talk? Yeah. Why don't you have lines? Why are you here? So you've written a letter. So I was just like <laughs> little things like that. Yeah. I'm like. This ca- why is this character in the scene? And then every scene, every time that scene comes up, you're just like that fucking thing is going to talk it, this I, time. It's not talking. I was just saying, why is it talking? Right. Like, and then of course I start going down the whole socioeconomical world, which is that because I start wandering and just drives Jill nuts. I'm but sure I can't, it does. I can't yeah. help it. But it's like you have this universe where there's large animals living in a world of medium and small and tiny animals, yeah. right? And we see at one point a fox goes into a an elephant like ice cream parlor, right? And there's giant popsicles, there's giant sundaes and things like that. Why would any animal not go to the elephant store? The bang for your buck on that store is amazing. Which makes you wonder about the economy, right? Because do is is that stuff upcharged? Like because at one point he goes because uh, they don't trust foxes because they're sneaky. He's right. like, what, you don't got any fox ice cream joints in your part of town? It's like, oh, wait, what if he does? Why wouldn't you just go to this place where you get massive popsicles? Right. Like for whatever. Or you got to think about accommodation, right? There's parts where like these, uh, there's like tiny rodents that are driving on the road. I'm like, you got to make sure that. They've got lanes. They've got lanes. When they come into buildings, is there a spot for them to get in as well as the large animals? Right. Because the elephant place, too, I didn't see a a handle to let anyone small in. There's all these things I'm like, oh, my God, do like the rodents get paid in smaller amounts in comparison because their cost of living is literally smaller? Right. Because they just live in smaller places. It's easier to maintain. Is there different size currencies? How is how are they holding right? the same dollars they're holding? Yeah. How do they figure that shit out? Like it's just the it reality blows my really mind. starts breaking down. And I'm like, and Jill goes, Will you just stop? Will you stop? I'm like, I can't help it. This is a kid's movie, Doug. I was like, I can't help it. This Animals world, live. This in world a fascinates me. Human world. Um <laughs> So to answer your question, there's nothing I will necessarily crave, yeah. but I will fixate on certain things yeah. where, oh, I missed this. Right? Oh, yeah. Abby's, Abby's lapping up the water. Lap up the podcast water. pooch. Yeah. Yeah. What do you got going over in Twitch? Uh, Seems like you got some silly fakes. I'm so, these, Silly th- fakes. This, this Twitch chat has been hands down the best one we have ever had. Uh, so after the... Um, <laughs> After that, uh, I, I made a uh, bets on a horse that didn't pan out. A dull moment goes, hey, some kid named Kevin just showed up on my door at the six pack of O'Doul. <laughs> O'Doul's asking to put a grand in a horse named jo- <laughs> Josephat. <laughs> Josephat. <laughs> he said to expense it to the Mind Gap account, question mark. And then Jared goes, I don't think that's right. I'm pretty sure Josephat was actually a donkey. <laughs> Drew goes, it would make sense if you met this kid. 
<laughs> he's definitely he's definitely betting on a, a on a donkey and a horse. <laughs> <laughs> He's truly the sea biscuit oh of his time. Oh my god, this chat's amazing. Thank oh, you everyone for this. This is fucking amazing. Yeah. For the record, Drew, that's also your expense account, so you might want to <laughs> figure that out. Um <laughs> I, uh, there I know there are, and I just had a couple like two other specific examples. One of them, and I can't remember what it, I remember what they're eating, but I can't, it always mm-hmm. comes back to food for me. One of them they're eating a sandwich that Oh wait, hold on. I'm getting it's it's I think it was a Beatles movie, like a helper hard day's night. He's eating a sandwich though. And when he bites into it, there's this crunch sound, mm-hmm. almost like, like lettuce. And it sounds just like, it sounds so good mm-hmm. that I'm like, I want a lettuce sandwich. Oh God. I know. I know. Throw some mayonnaise on there. <sighs> but like, you look at that. I just, I'm like, every time I see it, I'm like, I'm hungry. Yeah. It just triggers like the hunger, resp- the hunger mechanism. Yeah. And I know there was one more that always happens to me, but it's it's something I, I was noticing. And I'm like, oh man, there are certain things that I watch that hands down trigger me. Just be, I'm like, I need to eat. Is it most movies that Brad Pitt's in? Because he's almost always eating. That's true. In a lot of Ironically, things. no. Brad Pitt makes me full. Just his, <laughs> full. Just his full presence my fills me up. Just fills me up. Brad Buttercup. Pitt fills me up. Yeah. Hard. Every time I see him, I always think because there's I know the pull quote for the they've, episode. They've they've done like a lot of like how many scenes he's in where he's eating something. Oh yeah, it's every movie. The yeah. one I think is most memorable to me is when he's trying when he's eating pizza in the movie Seven. Okay, and he's just like this greasy pizza, and he uses his tie to like wipe off his yeah. hands. I'm just like, oh, I would never use my tie to wipe off my hands. But like, I want that. Yeah. Um, I was, he's just like, I'm just eating it. I'm like, oh, man. I mean, the the inside joke one is at the end of Ocean's Eleven when mm-hmm. he takes a bite. He's standing outside the jail and he, he stops and goes. Yeah. <laughs> like he burps almost like he's at indigestion because yeah. he's been doing nothing but eating. Yeah. In every movie he's ever been. Yeah. Because in that movie, like yeah. he's eating nachos at one point. Everything. And like, yeah. yeah you're he's like, constantly man. eating. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know. I know there's more. I'm gonna Oh, fi- another thing I fixate on. Oh, please. Yeah. The movie Iron Man. All right. Obadiah Stane comes back. Tony's been working on his suit and everything, and, he's, and Obadiah's playing the piano, and he's like, Tony's like, bad news? And he just kind of like says anything. He's like, oh, that bad, huh? He's basically saying he went to go to a board meeting, and it didn't go over oh, in well. in New York, yeah. And he brought back pizza right. from New York. When he opens up that pizza box, that pizza looks fucking disgusting. It looks absolutely gnarly, <laughs> dried out, gross. Well, the thing is, it's And prob- Tony takes it and takes a bite. I'm like, And takes oh, another one, yeah. No! And he steals another piece. I'm right. like, put that back! You don't want it. So two things to that. Number one, yes, that pizza has probably sat on a plane for a solid three hours. Oh, at least if not more. I don't know. Like, you know, again, I don't know how fast their jets go because Iron Man exists in this world. Yeah, so, but he but came at, from New York. At so least three hours. And he's in Malibu. Right. Because so that's a six hour flight. Right. Again. But so I'm saying like <laughs> it's at least three, but if not six or longer, because there's taxiing, there's getting to the airport. You didn't have the pizza just. It's not in the I'm airport. sure he had a private jet, and I'm sure they probably had some heating mechanism on there, but still. Sure. Still. Have you ever eaten a Sabaro? I, yes. <laughs> Delicious. Delicious. Uh, second thing to that point, I would 100% still eat that pizza. Ugh. There's rare a pizza that I won't eat. It's just so funny because everything in that movie is like flashy and new right. and like <laughs> shiny. And then it's like, oh, look at this gross pizza. And he's like, <laughs> rah, 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 rah. I'm like, oh, God, no. Not the pizza, not man. The, not the pizza, Tony. It's like, not the uh, pizza. It's like, oh, we could have found a better prop for this for this scene. What's in the box? <laughs> What's in the box? Um, Why wasn't Brad Pitt in the Marvel movies? Do you think it was by choice, or do you think he wasn't invited? <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you the way you phrase that. Was he not invited? Um, I don't know, man. I feel like he could. It's just the the caliber of people that we've had. I think it's a shame. Yeah, that we didn't have him pop up. In there, Tom Cruise almost was Iron Man. No, he was dangerously close. Really, very, very close to being Iron Man. You know what? I think he would have done an okay job. You think so? I think so. Really, I, he can play a cocky guy. I mean, really well. Yeah, he's but... pretty heroic. Now, I think, I think for the and this was my brother's thought for the first half of everything we saw of like of the Marvel universe to this point. I think. Um, Tom Cruise would have done very well. Mm-hmm. The second half, I don't think he could have pulled it off like Robert Downey Jr. did. As far as like the beaten up, busted, sort of like Thanos in his head. Yeah. But I think right out of the gate, 
Iron Man one, two, three, Avengers one and two. I think I think he could have pulled it off. I just feel like it would have it would have been the Tom Cruise show. I feel like he I feel like his celebrity would have eclipsed the actual role, and I don't think it would have I don't think it would have I do not think it would have worked. Well I don't think they would have yeah. been successful. I well I definitely agree with you in that regard. Robert Downey Jr. was amazing, but I think Tom Cruise could have pulled it off. I think he again early on. He totally could have played I could, that I role. Could see, I could see that argument yeah. being made for sure. I could see the argument because I could, you know, he could have some pretty intense moments, you know, especially yeah. like if you're thinking about that first movie when you know he makes it out and everything, and he starts getting upset because he realizes that his company's selling arms on the table and yeah. he's watching the news and like cranking his 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 gauntlets and stuff like that. Like I could see Tom Cruise doing that and having that moment where he's like intense about trying to make a difference. That I could see, yeah. You know? And the whole, like, you know, yeah. the, the shooting the window out and all that. Exactly. That's another movie. What's Burger that? King. The okay. che- When he eats the cheeseburgers. When what? When Robert Downey Jr. eats the cheeseburgers uh. at the press conference. <laughs> that's another movie. That I every single time. I find it hard to believe that he likes Burger King. I find it really hard to believe that Tony Stark... Uh, rich people like the weird shit. Uh, what? Of all things, you know, and I don't like it, but he doesn't like In-N-Out, you know? He doesn't like a regional chain. He's like, no, I gotta go for Burger King. It's I like, mean, really? why he wouldn't like In-N-Out Burger is beyond me. Yeah, I... Beyond me. Yeah, I, I find it hard to believe. Well, it's because uh, Burger King was the only the first sponsor of the cup. Of course! Oh, absolutely. But it's like this guy has been to... He's been in, you know, at internment camp forever and he's like the first thing i want to get is a an american cheeseburger and he goes to fucking burger king yeah doubt it doubt it yeah hard doubt yeah 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 Ugh. but when's the last time you had burger king uh right dude, you forgot how good it was it is not good that doug. is like doug okay what would you eat over burger king wendy's. what would you possibly wendy's. choose over burger king wendy's culver's Cor- corporate shill <laughs> <laughs> Part of me is interested in trying Arby's again. I haven't had it for a long time, don't. but I'm like, don't do it, Doug. You know, don't funny, do it, Doug. I tell you a funny story. Please do. So my hometown of Kirksville, Missouri, opened up an Arby's about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. Is it just flourishing? <laughs> my mom goes, I've gone up there and I've tried just about everything on the menu. I'm like, Mom, how's the toilets? Are they they, they clogged? <laughs> they, do you need a plumber? Like, how are you feeling? Because She's just going through and trying everything on the menu. I'm like, oh. We've got, we just purchased a new 13% grade toilet. That <laughs> <laughs> your father does not sit in there for long at all. We actually installed bidets right. just to make it easier. It's you know, just, just amazing. Just, it's fire hose level. Just, Goes out, cleans it right off. Just, it's amazing, yeah. I feel, we feel great when it's done. <laughs> I was just like, oh, just, ugh. Do me a favor. Count down from three. <laughs> Hold on. Count down. Can I tell you one more story? Sure, yeah. Uh, my mom called me the other day. I love you, mom. Um, <coughs> and I've told this before, but this drove me nuts. Um, as my mom has gotten older, something is happening to her um, that just I don't understand. When I was young, I must have been like eight or nine. There's this place called whatever, called the Hometown Cafe. Uh-huh. I was like, the Hometown Cafe. My mom goes, no, it's Cafe. It's pronounced like cafe. Forcefully corrected you. I was like, but it's spelled C A F E. It's cafe. And she's like, it's French. I was like, whoa. Okay. Whoa, that stuck with me. She got memory. angry. That stuck with yeah. me hard. She, <laughs> she told me uh, one of her good friends has been traveling all over the world. She's like, she's been to Russia and she went to London and she went to f- Paris. And when she was in Paris, she went everywhere. She went to all the museums. She went to the Louvre. And I, I a part of me was like, uh, what did you just say? The Louvre? I'm sorry, Miss Cafe. Right. You're going to call it the Louvre? How do I always want to be like, it's French. Do you think she doesn't it's really doesn't Louvre. know? I tell you what, like, man, maybe she doesn't. Maybe you she's need to scream really at bad, her. And I love my brother too, but he's also really bad at pronouncing stuff. Really bad. My favorite one, we were playing this game and this character's name is Malady. Yeah. M A L A D Y. And he's like, uh, did you turn that into Milady? I was like, that is not pronounced, Milady. Maybe it is, though. It is not, because the characters in the game, the voice actors, call her Malady. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. And he's like, yeah, Milady. I'm like, it is not Milady. It's not M-A apostrophe lady. <laughs> it's not my lady. It's yeah, yeah. Malady. And I'm like, ha! Huh? I hear that stuff, and I'm like, I'll let one go. The yeah. second one, I'm like, huh. if it happens again, I'm like, I'm sorry. What are you saying? My, my grandfather uh, calls the actor Al Pacino. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. It's amazing. Oh, no. Or a latte. Who? I went to get a latte. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
I went to Starbucks and we got one of those lattes. Oh, yeah. It's like when the... When and we went and saw the Al Pacino movie. <laughs> Ate at Cheddar Cheeses. It's just Cheddar's. Cheddar Cheese. <laughs> It's like when uh, memes came out and people didn't know how to pronounce it. Right. Someone was like, yeah, I love the new, uh, I saw this funny meh, meh. Or the meme <laughs> The meme Yeah. Which I get, it makes sense. Yeah. Like, but it's like once you finally collect, like, oh, it's meme. Oh, it's, oh, that's right. I mean, that's uh, what we're calling yeah. it. It's oh, the, like when people like say like, uh, you know, GIF, you know, it's fucking GIF. Yeah. You fucks. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's always a hotly debated one. Once people say GIF, I'm always like. <laughs> oh, do we want to, want to go into this? Okay. Here we go. All right, here we go. Yeah. Three. Two, one. Throw down! <laughs> Got to it. Yep. <laughs> um, we should do a third time between Burger King and Hungry Jack's because Jared. I've never been to Hungry Jack's. Well, we haven't been to Australia, so that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. That's, that's, I thought, I was thinking Jack in the Box, that's what I was thinking. No, uh, very different. Hungry, but Hungry, Hungry Jack. Jack's versus Jack in the Box. What? That's what we should do because it's like, Jack in the name. I, I don't know how to, <laughs> I don't know how to compare these. Well, I don't Jack know. that. Uh, <laughs> Jack that. Last time I said that. So as a kid, Jared thought Chicago was Chicago. You know what? It makes sense. Does it, though? It does. Okay. Chicago. That flawless Australian accent. Thank you. If that's all you've ever heard your whole life. Oi, Chicago. So we talked about Marvel movies right at the end there. We did. And uh, <clears throat> I was going through and looking at some old throwdowns and some lists that we had. And there's a few pairings that I think we have not done yet that right. I'd like to throw out there, uh, getting back into the Marvel. Uh, the one that I was going to do today, I'm saving for next week. Nice. Uh, when we have a special guest on. Cool. Uh, well, yeah, when you not when you're watching this, but when you listen to it, it'll be next week. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's Based off when this comes out. So Once you do eight threes, <laughs> it'll, it'll come back around. Or seven fours, you yeah. know, and then work 20 a day, hours <laughs> later. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today, I think I'd like to do. I'd like to bring Spider Man back. All right, uh, Spider Man. Uh, if we remember early on, trounced Captain America, absolutely decimated. Pretty him. sure that's not how that went. Floored him, wiped mm. his ass with him. Yeah. And uh, today, I'd, I'd like to do going. the winner, Spider Man versus Black Panther. Ooh, ooh, because they were both ooh. very jumpy and hoppy around. Yeah, and technically, I mean, Black Panther does have a little bit of supernatural ability because he kind of has the spirit of all the previous Black Panthers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inside of him. Inside of him. And he yeah. obviously is like vibranium, mm -hmm. um, vibranium claws. Um, he could easily cut whatever webbing Parker, yeah. you know, slung at him. However, you know, Spider the agility and the strength that Spider-Man... We've seen Black Panther... Display some strength, but Spider Man can lift multiple tons. Yeah, Spider Man, I definitely think has more sheer strength. Mm -hmm. He also has that crazy agility, which I don't think Black Panther has. He obviously has a spidey sense, you know. Black Panther? No, uh, Spider Man. Oh yeah, yeah. Black Panther. Black does Panther not has have, the agility, though. He doesn't have spidey sense, though. He does not have spidey sense, but yeah. I would say they're they're relatively equally matched on agility based off of what we've seen on screen. But at the same time, I would add, I would, I would give it to Spider Man in that regard because he can sort of anticipate what's about to happen. True. He can also stick to walls. Yes. So again, <laughs> well, where, where, it, where it becomes more problematic is if they're just in a flat area. <laughs> it's very true. That's very true. Now, yeah. not saying he can't use his webbing and stuff like that, but he's not going to be nearly as effective at like getting a covering ground. Sure. We see that in uh, Homecoming where he lands on a golf course and he's like, Psst. right. And he goes into nothing. He's like, dang it. He just runs, <laughs> runs yeah. across the golf course because yeah. he has anything to hook onto. Um, so he's obviously limited in that sort of situation. You put him in any place that has like, right. Things no, he, for can, him to he can use it for, he can attach it. He can sure. use it to stop, you know, uh, you know, sling it onto black Panther's wrist and, mm -hmm. and, you know, does stop he have the iron from... spider armor? Ooh, that's, another question. that's a good one. No, I'm going to say in this instance, no, I feel yeah. like the iron spider armor would just put him to, well, I would level. also say, you know, I would say, I think black Panther would be able to cut through it. With his vibranium the iron claws, yeah. I mean, he was able to scratch. But there's so much additional yeah. technology worked like into the iron spider. Insta kill, you know. Right, exactly. Like yeah. Insta kill, like yeah. those legs. Yeah. Like I really, I think if we're gonna keep it like on the level, it's got to be Black yeah. Panther in his outfit versus Spider Man in his. Okay, I think that's fair. Uh, the, the OG Spider Man outfit. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel because because Black Panther has some tech too. But <coughs> he's got his thing that the more kinetic energy it takes, yep. he can do he can AOE, it, yeah. AOE blast. But I don't know. I guess, again, if we're, we're talking this is a flat area, I feel like Black Panther has better tactics. 
because Peter Parker's a kid. Yeah. So I feel like Black Panther would be able to potentially outmaneuver him in that regard because Black Panther's a straight up warrior. He's a king. He has very strong political knowledge, tactical knowledge. So I feel like that puts him at an, an advantage, which is why Captain America beat Spider Man. Yeah. Um, because of his sheer tactics and soldier ability. So um, in that regard, I think that Black <laughs> Panther would be able to outmaneuver him and outplay him. He is a kid. Yeah. So um, I think it's I think you know Peter could become distracted or easily um, uh, put on tilt. In that sort of regard, I think he could. Now, if we're looking at Peter Parker post homecoming or post uh, far from far home. from home, I think that's a different story. Yeah, but he, still, he's he's he's, he's, he's weathered, he's war torn. Like he's 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 gotten a lot of experience. He has, but he's also fucked up a lot, which he is experience. Ha- well, exactly, yeah. But so I, I mean, he. I still think that. Um, I don't know if Peter's actually faced a physical threat or opponent quite like Black Panther. He got the shit kicked out of him by Thanos, but I don't think he's had a situation where he's had to go toe-to-toe just straight up physically with anybody because in the first movie, it was Vulture, which wasn't so much of a physicality. Yeah. Uh, It kind of was, but not really. Mysterio was a mental sort of situation. So I don't think he's really necessarily from what we've seen in the movies mm. fought someone in you know in the comic books sure but well, yeah. we're not wandering down that path like purely from the movies his physical tests haven't been to the point where now he's done a lot of cool like especially in Far From Home when he's getting through the drones and things like that whatever but to face an opponent that is I would say has more tactical experience more war experience more um, battle experience I think. In that regard, because they, I would say, what they went through in Infinity War is pretty similar to some degree. Because yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, with yeah. what Black Panther fought, and, and, but but the thing is, like Black Panther has the knowledge of his ancestors, yeah, and he has all yeah, that sort that's of stuff. A good fucking point. So I think that gives him an advantage. I just look at Spider Man doing all those little flippy woos and these uh, his webbing is just. I, I feel like that puts him at a huge advantage. Th- but to to your point, uh, you know, Black Panther does. We've like when he went up against Iron Soldier or a Winter Soldier rather, mm-hmm. uh, like. Completely like ch- chased him down, yeah, toe to toe. Yeah, his arm didn't fucking you know matter one yeah. iota to him. He didn't give a shit. And no. so like he really, yeah. I feel like Black Panther would have the goods to. I th- he, I think I would give him the slight edge. Yeah, in that regard. Now, assuming that whatever Peter shoots at him, web wise, he can get out of. Because if for some reason Peter just is like bah, 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 and just like covers him in webbing, right. and he's like. Bah! You know, no, no. But again, each one of those hits would cause kinetic energy. He could use that to kind of dispel that. He's also got his claws to. to Yeah. I mean, he's. I think he's. Yes, I agree. Peter Mm -hmm. could gum him up. Yeah. I think Spider Man could gum him up a lot. And I think if you run it through a simulator, Mm -hmm. it's going to come out pretty close. But I do think, based off of what you just kind of said at the end there, I do think that's going to be. I think I give the edge to Black Panther. I think Black Panther. So Black Panther for the win! Dude, 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 dude. Uh. Thank you to Twitch for this. This has been what a lovely evening. I mean, and I'll catch you up on what's happened while I have not been watching this. It's mm-hmm. it is something else. So yes, thank you to Twitch. That's awesome, uh, Justin. What have you got to recommend? Oh boy, uh, since uh, recording last night, nothing new. So mm-hmm. um, marvelous, Mrs. Maisel. Check it on out. Nice. Yeah. Oh no, I take it back. Um, so you're a liar. I am. <laughs> Flat out. Everything I've said, don't believe anything in this podcast. Um, it's a YouTube series uh, or Funny or Die series uh, called Under a Rock mm-hmm. with Tig Notaro. Oh, nice. It is the most endearing, beautiful, I love Tig Notaro more mm-hmm. than I can express. That's awesome. This. So the concept is she doesn't she doesn't watch movies or she, wa- she doesn't go to a lot of movies, doesn't watch TV hardly ever, doesn't follow pop culture. So when she is in a... When she's in like a social setting, because she's, you know, a celebrity of sorts herself, you know, stand up comedian, well known, been in some movies. So there's a lot of times when she'll be talking to someone at a party, has no idea who they are. Mm -hmm. And her wife at the end will come up and like, you were just talking to Maggie Gyllenhaal. And she's (laughs) like, oh, is that who that was? What movies has she been in? And she has no idea who she's to sue. She is terrible at identifying celebrities. Yeah. So a celebrity will come on her show and she has to try to guess who they are. Oh my God. They come out, she has no idea who this person is. 
Is that, this like a bit or a real thing? No, this is, as far as I can tell, uh, it is 100% real. That's hilarious. Because I read an interview with Tig later, and the journalist was asking about it. She's like, and she told the story about the party, mm-hmm. where she's like, I'll be at parties, and like people will walk away from me, and I'll have to turn to my wife and go, which one was that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> she's like, I don't know these people. I don't follow celebrity. Yeah. She goes, which makes it hard, because everyone in Hollywood, people know me, so they'll come up like, Tig, and I'm like, hey, fella, you know, yeah. like, how you doing? <laughs> And like she doesn't know, so like she, uh, Tony Shalhoub was on, uh-huh. and so she had to. He would give her clues, and you know, like someone uh, they called someone, and they're like, you know, your clue is, you know, I'm not going to ruin this for you. So like a monk, I'm taking a vow of silence. And she's like, all right, there was a clue in there. <laughs> I've heard of the show Monk. Were you on the show Monk? And he's like, I was. She's like. All right, so what's your name? <laughs> it's like, I don't know who you are. And it's just watching her have these interactions. If it's staged, yeah. it's done so well, I cannot tell. So watch Under a Rock with okay. Tiggy Taro. It's, there's two seasons, and I think there's six episodes per season, and there's seven minutes. That's awesome. It's so good. I love it. Yeah. I love everything about that. That's amazing. Um, I'm late to the game on this, but I just watched it. I bought this movie just knowing I was going to like it. Uh, it Chapter 2. Um, I know it got kind of like mixed reviews. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was a nice second chapter uh, to the original movie. Uh, Bill Skarsgård fucking knocks it out of the park yeah. as Pennywise. And I actually watched some of the behind-the-scenes stuff on it, and it uh, it was really cool. It was really cool watching Bill Skarsgård like, talk about the character, how he approached it. Fucking horrifying how I'm he sure, just yeah. got into that sort of stuff. I need so to see that, yeah. It's really good. I highly recommend it. I definitely think the first one's stronger, but this one is... Excellent. It's so good. I think it, it encapsul- encapsulates both movies really well. I think they did a good job telling the story. So it chapter two. Gown. Gown. Gown with it. And to prep for next week's episode, yes. again, when you're listening to this, not when you're watching it on Twitch, yes. uh, to prep for next week's episode, I would say I would strongly recommend going to see Star Wars yes. this weekend. Because we will most likely be covering that with a special guest. You got it. So, hoo! Gang, uh, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Uh, don't forget, you can follow us on our social medias at MindGap Podcast, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We're also on Twitch. So, like us, subscribe. That'd be really cool. Uh, we'd love to get to 50 subscribers. We'd like to hit some of these milestones so we can become an affiliate. Boom. I don't know what that unlocks, but maybe something pretty cool. So, you having get a level up noise, having 50 uh, subscribers is part of that. So, if uh, you could like and subscribe or get some other folks and help us out here, that'd be great. Uh, so also we're on Twitch most times on Tuesdays. Today was a special night, but check for us. Uh, we post on our social media. It's usually Tuesdays at 6.30, twitch.tv slash mindgappodcast. Also check out our YouTube channel for our episodes and other videos there. And Justin is available online. That's right, on Instagram and Twitter at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It is the fun way of spelling it. While you're in the online realm, check us out on Apple Podcasts, on Stitcher, uh oh, Spotify. And on Google Podcasts, wherever you can find the podcast and listen to them. Uh, you can rate us, review us, share us around, subscribe, all the things that we always ask you to do. Sharing, for me, is the big one, because sharing is caring. And then while you're in the... Un- or no, I already did that part. TwoEastEighth.com slash MindGap. And just keep an eye on all TwoEastEighth's social presences, because we've got some fun stuff dropping, hopefully, uh, relatively soon. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Yeah! Yeah, boy! Fuck you, Christmas! Okay, uh, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Listeners, thank you. Twitch, thank you. Twitch, thank you. Kevin, the intern, uh, you know, get back to work, but we love you. Yeah, you're close to a pip. All right, you're close to it. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Au revoir. Au revoir. I'm going to try one more. Uh, Au revoir. Bye,